guys, welcome back to the garage, man. I want to tell you guys, first, foremost, I want to apologize for the mustache. Look, to be straight up with you, I was kind of on the run from the police for a little bit. I got that all taken care of. That was my little disguise. Fuck 12. I'm just playing, dude, but on the real. They don't want none of this, but- Nah, but you'd be surprised. We actually have some police subscribers, dude. I've talked to, I, I believe I talked to one of them, at least on Instagram. Cops are car guys, too. Throw it in the comments down below if you guys are a police officer and you're a car guy. But yes, we got in a bruzy, I believe that's how you pronounce it, a bruzy. This is a racing transmission. I did buy this secondhand. It's not brand new, but it is basically brand new. It's in brand new condition. So the story is the guy that I bought this from, um, I, I wish I was recording, man, when I went to this dude's house. He had the sickest freaking rig. He had one of those big like diesel truck RV rigs with a huge two-story trailer with a lift inside and just like he had a nine-second drag car in his garage. And what they built was they, they had a racing team with those rigid framed uh, dragsters. This transmission right here was a backup for their rigid frame dragster. So a rigid frame dragster means there's no suspension in the back. It's just rigid, just huge ass tires. So there are some things that we're gonna have to change on this transmission to make it work for the truck. Um, and that is because it has a shorty tail shaft. So they have a shorty, they have a medium, and then they have a, the medium comes out to about here. And then they have a full length uh, tail shaft in which I'm not sure exactly what it is I'm gonna go with. I don't know if I'm gonna go with the medium or if I'm gonna go with the full length. I, I'm pretty sure I'll probably just end up going with the full length because I was watching some of Hugh's actual videos on uh, YouTube explaining like the power glide and the different shaft links and stuff so having a full length tail shaft isn't going to like hurt us for power if I get one of their billet tail shafts right now it has a billet shorty shaft in there so I need to go to either a billet medium shaft or a billet full size shaft basically um, and then there'll be a housing piece also that that extends out with it you know what I'm saying so we will be taking this transmission to Hughes in the near future to have them do uh, the necessary modifications to this uh, the problem with this is it doesn't allow you enough like movement in your yoke so this i would run the uh the possibility of possibly pulling my drive shaft out because there's not a whole lot of room for it to you know slide in and out and that is because this was originally on a rigid frame uh dragster so this is a about a 1500 horsepower capable transmission it has a turbo 400 input shaft uh, which is a lot stronger than the factory ones everything inside of this is aftermarket and really beefed up and it's also got a trans brake so we'll be able to uh build boost up on a trans break uh this is like look i honestly don't know a whole lot about the transmission so that is one of the reasons why i'm excited to take this thing down to hughes um and have them go over it and just tell me what it is i've really got here so i had mentioned that this was a backup Okay, a backup for their dragster. Now, he did tell me that this transmission went to Hughes already. Hughes completely tore this thing apart, went through it, and inspected and replaced anything needed to be replaced. Basically, this thing is brand spanking new. Uh, it does have the Hughes tag on it and everything still. This is not a stock case. This is a this is an SFI certified case, I believe is what you'd call it. I don't know. Dude, the case on this transmission alone, I was looking it up. Just the case, it's 1500 bucks. I'm like, good Lord. But anyhow guys, if I saw in the comments in the last video, somebody had mentioned that I should have went with a Turbo 400. Bro, Turbo 400 like weighs three times as much as that transmission. Um, you can ask anybody or do the research yourself. Anybody that's going to like, like for a full race, like dedicated race application, go with a power glide. This thing is so freaking light, bro. That is lighter than the transmission I have in khaki, than my B-series uh, GSR trans. But it will handle a beating, dude. This thing will take upwards of 1,500 horsepower um, and plus, 1,500 plus horsepower uh, before you'd have to worry about upgrading anything inside of here.
So a guy just came and picked up that rear end from me, the original one out of the S10. So when I pulled that thing off, I immediately threw it up on Marketplace and yeah, it sold pretty quick. You know what, dude? Selling that rear end, I didn't have to deal with a bunch of freaking like low ballers or freaking people messaging me telling me that I have it priced way too high or anything like that. I've noticed I only get that from anything Honda related that I sell, bro. Anything Honda related that I sell, I'll have people message me. I'll have something up for 400 bucks. They'll message me, hey bro, take 200? Yeah, sure. Actually, you know what, I'm wrong. Remember that original Cal hood that we got for the S10? And then I ended up getting that new one from LMC Truck. Well, I posted that Cal hood up and I, I think I posted it up for like $400 or best offer, right? I had people offering me like 150 bucks, dude. If you get online and look at how much those fiberglass Cal hoods cost, they are five, $600. I put it up for 400 or best offer. Like I was hoping to get like $300 for it. So I had people lowballing me to the point that I just took it down. I was like, this hood is worth more to me sitting on the shelf somewhere than it is selling it for 150 bucks. I'd rather just keep the sum bitch. And that actually worked out perfect, bro, because bang, now I have another S10 that I can put that hood on. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is if I would have sold that hood, and if I thought to myself, I want to put a cowl hood on this one now, and then I went searching for one to buy, there was no way I was ever going to find one to buy for 150 bucks. There's no freaking way it was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad I kept my hood. So got the sedan moved out of the garage. The touch on the sedan, man. If you guys didn't see the live, and the reason why I didn't keep the live up, I, I got a bunch of comments saying, why'd you take it down the live, bro? Why'd you take it down the live? We had music playing in the background, and it was a copyrighted, it was copyrighted music. Um, I don't like leaving that stuff on my channel because I'm afraid it's going to give me a strike. I got a bunch of notifications and an email and shit from YouTube saying, uh, copyright claim, copyright claim, all this stuff. So I just put the damn... Uh, video on private. So if you guys didn't see the live, the winner of the sedan is Josh Backler out all the way out in Florida, bro. So I have to get the car to Florida. Originally, I was going to ship it down there. Honestly, I think not only is it going to be cheaper for me to just take it myself, but I also think it would be exciting, bro. I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to go to Florida. Um, I was kind of contemplating on moving to Florida, if I was being honest with you guys. Um, I don't don't know if I'm actually there now, but I do want to go visit. So I'm excited about delivering the car myself. I'll get to go out there and meet Fackler for the first time and actually, you know, hang out with him and his family for a little bit. I've been talking to a couple other subscribers out there in Florida. I mean, we have a big following out there. There's a lot of you guys who are from Florida and I look forward to meeting as many of you guys as I possibly can. And who knows, maybe we might try to make stops on the way. I, I can't promise that because it's going to like, I'm going to have to kind of get out there and get back because you guys know I have a lot of responsibilities here with Bear and stuff. So, hey out guys, got the car moved out and we're kind of setting Braven up in here because this is a cleaner environment for him to do some work. Uh, if you guys aren't following along, he has the old engine out of the CRV and we are prepping the new engine to go in. But we do have basically all of the gaskets for this engine, even a new head gas. So originally this was going to go into the EF, the Barnyard Fine EF, but I have different plans for that car. That's a future project. So for the time being, we have this here. We need an engine for the CRV. Uh, so we are gonna use this, but we do have a new head gasket and all that stuff. New gas, like all the new gaskets for this engine basically. So that's what Braven's gonna be working on today. If you guys are interested in seeing that, Go subscribe to this boy. Sir. It's Braven. <laughs> this guy. And honestly, I don't even know what it is I'm doing today, man. I really don't. Like, I was kind of thinking about maybe tearing the LS down, but I don't want to crack into that LS until I have everything. And I, you know what I mean? Then it's just going to be a mess all over the place. And we're not to the point to where we're ready to actually put the engine in the truck. Obviously, right? So um, I've been waiting on some, some suspension parts to come in that I purchased from a subscriber um he is also out in florida uh i've been waiting for him to ship those and and get them here i believe he has shipped them now so it's probably it's probably going to be a couple of days still so just 
I mean, it's not like a huge surprise. I bought, he had brand new upper and lower control arms uh, that he had purchased and that he's not using anymore. And also some brake stuff and everything. So um, he gave me a really good deal on it and I paid him for it and paid him to ship it out to me. So that's what we're waiting on. So with those brand new upper and lower control arms comes brand new bushings and stuff. And that's the reason why I did it. So all these bushings in here are all going to be brand new now. Um, and instead of tearing this down, and actually repainting these control arms and stuff we have brand new ones coming you know what i'm saying so it just makes sense and then i also took those lower ball joints that we bought back and got my money back because the lower control arms comes with new bushings and it comes with new ball joints but so does the uppers but you guys already know those the the upper ball joints that are coming on those control arms i'm gonna have to take off because i did get the one inch extended upper ball joints we'll cover all that whenever that stuff gets here man i've been dying bro like I want to get this damn frame put back together so bad. I want to get the suspension on and get it back to a rolling frame. So then we can go ahead and put the cab on. I need to get the cab on. I need to test fit the engine. I need to test fit the engine and transmission uh, so that we can figure out exactly where our X brace and our our loop for the drive shaft is gonna be like that all that stuff. So that's kind of what's holding me back right now on the S10. You gotta come see this. Where's the torch? Dude, my skin is crawling. Torch. Hurry before it's gone. Side of the house where the wood's at. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, why, 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 why? Oh my god, bro. Oh man. Oh, it's moving. Why is it? Oh, it's squished. Is it squished? Yeah. Dude. That thing is freaking ginormous, bro. You dare me to touch it? No, I don't dare you to touch it. I Dude, I was just touching all of this. Bro. Oh my God, dude, is there more? Dude, there's probably more. That was literally like the size of the thing that landed on my leg that time. Bro, oh my God. I found one of those in my bedroom, dude. I found one of those on the wall in my bedroom, bro. I gotta move. There's, there's nothing else to it. I gotta move. Anyhow, while Braven's in there working on the engine, uh, I'm gonna do some recycling. Of the, this is the wood that we use to make the forms for the concrete. I still have more of this over there in the death trap. I don't wanna touch it now. I don't wanna touch it. Anyhow, we need a workbench out here. We need something more than just this thing. I mentioned to you guys whenever we were doing this, like I wanna do that covered area in which the plan was to use the money from the flip EK to buy all the material for this. But dude, that transmission came up. I saw that thing on Marketplace and it was for a stupid like it was literally eighteen hundred dollars cheaper than what i was going to spend on basically the same exact transmission you know what i'm saying so when i saw that and i hit the guy up and he was telling me about the service history on it and that the fact that the thing is basically brand new i was like yeah i have to get this thing right now bro so yeah i'm gonna have to find somewhere else to pull the money from in order to build this covered area but whenever we do that um, I plan on moving my workbenches from the garage and actually putting them out here and setting this up a lot better for actually like doing work out here. But at the moment, it kind of freaking sucks. I mean, there's plenty of space, but it kind of sucks to work out here. So what would make it a lot nicer is if we had a workbench, but not one up here against the wall. I want to make one that like is kind of out here you know what i'm saying and the plan is to put the thing on wheels so that we can move it up here whenever we need it and we can move it out of our way whenever we don't but what else would be even dope about having it on wheels is if i need it like inside the spray booth dude i can roll that thing into the spray booth and be able to set up for sanding or spraying or whatever so i don't have what it is i need to do car stuff right now so i'm going to i'm gonna do this what can i say All right, so I've got this thing pretty well planned out. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more than seven feet long. And let me see. I got these cut down to 85. So yeah, it's gonna be about, it's gonna be about 90 inches long. These, these two boards right here, these are basically gonna stand like this. 
like this. And then these are all cut down to 19 inches. I'm always struggling to do shit one handed. I'm like, dude, you got a tripod. <laughs> so yeah, basically this is gonna sit like that, like that. Yeah, so it's gonna go together like that basically. And the reason why is I want this to be like really strong. So this is going to provide a lot of support being like that. I have five verticals in there. So obviously one on each end and then uh, three in the center. Or actually I think that'd be considered horizontals. I don't freaking know. But so this will be the main structure. It's exactly 85 inches long. So the tabletop is gonna be 90 inches. So that would give me a two and a half inch overhang on both sides. And then I just bumped up five of these together because I have five full length sheets over there and five of them together comes out to just a little bit over 27 inches. So I made this 22 inches wide. So once again, I'll have a two and a half inch overhang all the way around. So if we need to like clamp something, you know what I'm saying? With all these boards here running through the center, that'll give me plenty of area that I actually put screws in to attach the boards on top so it's good and strong. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and build the legs off. I'll mount the legs to this to go down. Originally, I wanted to make this a lot longer. I was gonna make it the full length of these boards, which is almost 10 feet, but I brought it down to the 90 inches, which is just a little bit over seven feet, so that those full sticks, that, that section that I have to cut off to take it from almost 10 feet down to 90 inches, that section is long enough that I can use for the legs. So since being I don't have any four by four, like what I use for the legs on that, what I'm gonna do is use two of these, these uh, two by sixes, so there'll be one on each side, you know what I'm saying? So I need basically two pieces for each corner to make my legs. And if I was gonna make this thing 10 feet long, I was gonna run out of material. So I needed to make it, I needed to bring the length of it down enough so that I can cut enough off of those full length boards to that, that drop off of those will be long enough to make the legs for this, so. It's gonna work out though. I've measured this thing like that. That's gonna be a pretty decent sized little workbench that we're able to roll anywhere that we need it. Um, and it's also going to be skinny enough because it'll be a total of 27 inches wide, which you come over here to my doorway and 27 inches fits through there just fine. So I think the doorway is actually, yeah, the doorway is 34 and a half, almost 35 inches. So at 27 inches wide, we'll still be able to roll this thing into the garage if we need it out front. So instead of having to go all the way around the house. That's the plan. There it is. <laughs> I pre-drilled with a 30 bit and put a screw, uh, three screws in every one of these. So three, 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 you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that thing is good and strong. Every time I do anything with wood, I always get the comment, you should have put wood glue or did you put wood glue? No, I didn't put any wood glue. I don't have any wood glue. <laughs> so just to answer that comment before it comes, cause I already know it's going to. Um, I don't do wood, I, like I don't make, like how do I say this? I'm not like a woodworker, you know what I'm saying? I don't have that kind of stuff laying around. Um, and whenever I do things like this, projects like this, it's normally with stuff that I just have laying around. I should probably get some wood glue. If I had some in there, I'd most certainly put it in there, you know, as I'm screwing shit together, but I don't have any, so. Anyhow, moving on, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut the legs and get the legs all installed before we actually do the top because it'd probably be easier that way. I can get the legs all screwed on and then we can stand this thing up and then just slide the top boards on and just pre-drill and screw. she is now I know what you might be thinking this thing is really short like I'm kneeling down right now and yeah it's still not even to my shoulder <laughs> in which yeah it is really short but hear me out now uh, we have to add the the two by sixes to the top 
you know, for the actual bench section of it. Um, that is an inch and a half. And then I'm also going to be running one horizontally across the bottom from leg to leg that is actually going to stick out the same amount that, remember I said this is gonna overhang two and a half inches from here? So I that's gonna be a total of about 27 inches wide. So I am going to add a board that's going to go underneath the legs that is also going to be 27 inches wide reason being that board is going to be what it is that we bolt the wheels to so i'm going to go pick up a set of wheels for this the same exact wheels that we used on that cab cart out there because i don't know if you saw but that thing rolls really freaking nice in the dirt on the rocks like it comes up and down this with no problem like those wheels are freaking dope hell we even whenever we're cleaning the backyard use that cart and put it underneath that big store shed in the corner and rolled it around and those wheels had zero freaking issues so i want to go get a set of those from harbor freight that's what i'm going to put on these on this as well um those wheels i want to measure them they're a little bit over they're about nine and a half inches tall so with the nine and a half inches the the height of those wheels the inch and a half i have to add here an inch and a half down here for a total of three um so that's nine ten eleven about twelve and a half inches that we are still going to be adding to this so if you look at 12 12 and a half inches how much higher that's going to bring it it's going to bring it to basically a total of three foot and a half of an inch so 36 and a half inches tall because i actually put thought into this bro that's how tall all my other workbenches are so i want to match the height so that remember this is this is going to damn tape measure remember this is going to be on wheels so let's say we're working on something in the garage or out here on these workbenches um, something heavy like a transmission or a block or whatever um, we can actually roll this over to these workbenches and since they'll be the same height you can just kind of slide things off and on you know what i mean so that was kind of my thought process behind that but for the time being we can go ahead and get this finished up as far as the wood portion of it i'm going to add that piece on the bottom on both ends and then we can go ahead and finally do the top but from there we're just going to have a little shorty god freaking fly but from there we're just going to have a little short workbench for the time being until i make it over to harbor freight we got to go and pick up those wheels so you know All right, so these pieces that I'm putting on the bottom to actually put the wheels into, uh, I want a good strong area to be able to either bolt or lag the wheels to. Otherwise, we'd have to attach it to that, to that L shape. So I figured if we add this, that will make it a lot stronger. So if you come in here and we measure the distance at the bottom, so where these legs are mounting to this uh, brace, whatever you'd want to call it. I don't know all the terms for this shit, but uh, this distance right here in between here is 22 inches. So if you come up here to the top, or well, it's upside down, but the bottom of the legs, uh, this distance in between here should also be 22 inches, but it's not. It's 21 and a half. So that means it's not square. Uh, I made this section right here 22 inches so that we can basically hammer this in there and then that's going to force this thing to be square. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the easy way of like making sure this shit's all square. You know, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Bam. Just like that. So now that board is going to actually force these to stay at the same distance as it is down here, basically squaring it up. So now we can actually send screws down into the legs this way and then we could also send screws through the legs into this brace this way so there you know what i mean it's just multiple points of attachment so now add even more strength and if i was really thinking ahead i should have left these boards right here an inch and a half longer and it would have came up flush to there and then we could even put screws in that direction but i wasn't thinking that far ahead i wish i would have kind of drives me freaking nuts that i didn't but it is what it is, man.
trying to keep this damn crack right here completely closed like i don't want to be able to see through it like that so it worked great with the first two but then the biggest clamp that i have it wasn't big enough to go across so i double them up bro freaking whatever works right but yeah it makes a huge difference so i could push in on this as hard as i can and it still isn't closing that gap up completely doing is using a combination of these clamps and i can actually see as i'm clamping as i'm closing this clamp it is shutting that gap i think i want to get closer over here with a whole line of clamps bro to get this last board clamped down but it's all good got rid of all the gap the top is nice and tight and closed up to one another i don't know if you guys can see but how many freaking screws is holding this damn thing down you know what i'm saying <laughs> thank god for 11 r's That's it. Tell you the truth, I really don't mind it being that low, man. It seems kind of not, well, I don't know. If I was actually like working on something, I could, the wheels are going to add nine inches. So it's going to bring this thing up nine, to a total of three feet. So it's going to bring it up to the same height as this right here. All right, just got back from Marble Freight, man. I had to deal with freaking rush hour traffic. What can I say? So lost daylight, but it's what it is. Got our damn wheels. So I did the same thing that I did with the, uh, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, that I did with the cap cart and we have two fixed wheels and then we have two swiveling wheels so you know what I'm saying one side will have the two fixed and one side will have the two swiveling so we can just kind of you know you know also grab some lag bolts for screwing this thing in so I'm excited about this gonna flip it over get these things lagged on here That thing is sick, dude. You gotta admit. Uh, definitely sick. That thing is freaking dope. So yeah, now we can literally roll this thing anywhere we need it. So if we need it in here in the garage, we can roll it in here. If we need it out back or in the spray booth, whatever. So um, I still want to, like, I'm done with this thing for tonight, dude, to be straight up with you. But I do still want to come back and sand it. Like, I want to kind of bevel the edges a little bit, maybe round these corners, clean this stuff up. I don't know, I might go ahead and, like, hit it with, um... Honestly, I'm thinking about just hitting it with engine oil, dude. Did you see how the wood looked whenever I hit it with engine oil when we're doing the frame out there? Yeah, I do. I do and it, it looks like this right here. Like, because this is the boards that I use for the frame. So it just darkens it, and it kind of, like... Yeah. I don't know. I think that'd be pretty dope. Go ahead and get a paintbrush and just smear freaking engine oil all over it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know. That was my day. So <laughs> still waiting on parts. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to get cracking on something for the truck. You know what I'm saying? I think either way, whether those parts come in or not, I'm going to go ahead and start tearing the, uh, the suspension down because some of this stuff I'm still going to use. So I may as well get a head start on it. You know, like the steering box, I mentioned I wanted to buy a new one, but dude, that one's perfectly fine. There ain't no sense of me buying a new one whenever that one's fine. So I need to get it torn down, uh, disconnected from all the tie rod ends and shit. And then, uh, kind of sandblast it. I want to paint it and clean it up. The sway bar needs to be done. It's all rusty looking. I don't even know why I'm trying to show you guys this stuff. It's so dark out here. You can't see anything, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the suspension stuff tomorrow. Hopefully our parts come in. If they do, that'd be freaking dope. But if they don't, I mean, may as well get a head start. So whenever they do come in, it'll be ready to just throw everything on. But anyhow, I hope you guys at least enjoyed today's video. I know it wasn't automotive related once again, but look at this. Braven got the head off the engine. Yeah, he's throwing a new head. I think I mentioned already. He's putting a new head gasket on that engine. Head gasket, freaking main seals, like everything. So he'll be posting this video up here pretty soon. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Peace out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.
You know, I just decided we need to put a shelf on the bottom. Yeah, I need to go ahead and run some boards going this way. And then get a piece of wood to go ahead and just make a shelf down here. Peace.